Hello and welcome to our panel discussion on co-design and collaboration using DevOps. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV. Deutsche Telekom and its vendor partners have established a set of co-creation programs that address specific issues for the evolution of next generation IMS. The NIMS project requires transparency for each software component to enable Deutsche Telekom to deliver on its time to market and total cost of ownership goals. Well, to explain more, I am joined by Christoph Hiltz, who is Group Head Voice and Messaging DevOps at Deutsche Telekom, David Nix, Senior Sales Engineer at Mavenir, Paul Britton, VP Product Strategy at Metaswitch, and Charles Furland, VP and GM Edge Computing and Telco at Lenovo. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for taking part in our discussion today. Christoph, can I start by asking you what do we mean exactly when we refer to co-design collaboration using DevOps? Yes, thanks, Guy. I think um, the uh, headline of our event is Deutsche Telekom and, uh, and uh, Partner Insight. The Telco Cloud is real. And uh, I think to, to make it real, we need to change the way uh, how multiple partners, in this case, Juniper, Metaswitch, Marvineer, HPE, Red Hat, Lenovo, but also Intel, how we collaborate. So first, I think it's more than just a different type of collaboration. It requires a continuous improvement process, uh, really where we need to measure each vendor's component uh, in life cycle against our 3 to one zero vision, uh, as we discussed yesterday. And the process really requires a transparency for each software component uh, that details how long it takes from the software build to roll it out to rele the release uh, and or a patch. I think the transparency then gives you a clear indication where the biggest lever for enhancement is. And then I think that's the different not the individual supplier, really the whole team, all suppliers sits together, redesign, align a plan, uh, and also uh, bring the enhancement active. Thus, really we solve issues within the team and work on other metrics that affects TD's ability really to deliver on its time to market and the total cost of ownership. On the second part, I think just putting in place agile teams, cloud native skills and automation culture are not enough uh, really uh, by its own. As mentioned, a continuous improvement process that measures everything makes those metrics visible to all and it takes action to improve them. That's definitely key closing on, uh, on the business goals. And we always look at it from end to end. And why? because we are a DevOps organization. If there is an emergency fix for our live network, which is required, you can't lean back and just focus on your main role within the team. The whole issue to resolution time is important to provide a secure, uh, secure services for our customers. You need to raise the ticket. You need to do the root cause analysis. You need to do the end-to-end -end coding uh, on supplier side. You need to check the fix in the lab. You need to execute the validation. Uh, you need to start Canary and you need to do the rollout and then the problem is gone. So everybody in the team needs to have full end-to-end -end DevOps view. And that's the reason why DevOps is so important. And Christoph, do you believe that this approach has paid off? Yes, so uh, definitely. So we are coming closer and, and closer to our vision on a daily basis. And uh, there are examples in our live network already where, where we achieved uh, parts of that vision. Last week, uh, for instance, we went for a patch in less than, than 20 hours through so the whole issue to resolution process. And this is not a nine day wonder. It occurs more and more uh, as we train our muscles on, on a daily basis. And that's really cool to see. And Charles, how important is it to align both hardware and software? Well, extremely important. Obviously, all of that software requires some hardware to execute the task, right? So we need to provide highly reliable, high-performance equipment. 
Now we first had to start with the capacity planning. How much, how many servers, how many, how much capacity do we need to deliver such a, such a project? So we had to plan this carefully with the software partner. We also had to optimize the hardware to get the most performance out of each and single server that we deployed into pr production. This is running a live network. This is a mission critical network. We need to make sure that it's fine tuned accordingly in order to make sure that we have the best performance out of it. And finally, through the life cycle here, we're realizing that uh, from time to time, there are some firmware updates or new uh, software to be deployed on the hardware to bring it up to speed. And at the same time, we need to align with our partners so that we don't do this in a silo. And that what we think is the right thing to do in one case might impact the rest of the solution as well. Therefore, we as uh, the hardware provider need to orchestrate the various updates on the hardware with the software partners so that the right hand know what the left hand is doing. And Paul, how did six vendors, who are also to varying degrees competitors, manage to work closer together as one team to deliver on this outcome? It's a very interesting question, Guy. Thanks for asking. Um, I think that came about for two reasons. Um, firstly, Deutsche Telekom engendered a true spirit of collaboration by kicking off a series of co-creation work streams alongside the main NIMS project. Uh, those work streams involve key engineers from all the vendors um, and then secondly, each of the individual engineers and the companies behind them wanted both NIMS and the co-creation effort to succeed, and they worked very hard to do so. And just to give you an example, after I'd done some work optimizing the hardware footprint for our MetaSwitch components, Deutsche Telekom asked me to lead the co-creation stream that was looking at the future evolution of NFE and cloud and the hardware footprint. Or as Christoph likes to keep challenging us, how low can you go? Well, that's been a very interesting project um, running for the past year um, with inputs from all parties, including Intel, Lenovo, Juniper, ourselves at Metaswitch, Mavenir, HP on automation and Red Hat as well. Um, and that's um, been a very collaborative and constructive process with a lot of data shared openly between the different engineers that's gone to create a detailed report into the future optimizations that would be possible, both for the NIMS cloud itself, but also for NFE more generally. And David, from your perspective, was it a challenge to work in such a multi-vendor project? It was very interesting to, to work, still work in, with six vendors in such, such a project. Deutsche Telekom already brought the vendors uh, together in the early stage, where we had visibility about the plans of the infrastructure, as well as the virtualization layer so that we could ensure that everything works together and that the compatibility is there of the workloads to work in that infrastructure and layer. Um, also, the uh, orchestration proof of concept that we did was also a good example of that, of working with multiple vendors uh, in order to uh, automatically initiate uh, a system, right, by, by using all these, these automated framework. Uh, further to that, the, the co-creation streams uh, are also a good opportunity and where we see that people working together to come to uh, conclusions and optimize the hardware as well as the software efficiencies. I think as where we look now uh, in the part to cloud native, the diverse skills and the common motivation of the team members enables us to deliver a comprehensive blueprint that is covering the automation, the orchestration, the application layer, and that describes an inspiration to a true cloud native architecture. So David, what is new in this approach and, and what's the benefit of it? I think what's new is that uh, from a standardization point of view, you're not only looking to, let's say, a standardization from 3GPP, but also standardization in the automation framework. So you're not ending up with uh, propriety interfaces, but also looking to standardize interfaces if it comes down to the uh, orchestration uh, interfaces that you need. Of course, there's a uh, infrastructure uh, investment protection because uh, you I can make use of dynamic scaling. Uh, you can reuse the resources if you don't need them anymore. So you're not stick to dedicated hardware. We also discuss innovative ideas in the co-creation streams that was already mentioned before, which also led to, to new uh, uh, improvements in futures and uh, efficiencies that we can apply. And in the end of the day, this automation brings the flexibility and the speed that you need with less efforts and provides also better quality. And Paul, as David said, um, we're seeing several benefits with this approach, both for Deutsche Telekom and for ultimately its customers. 
Yeah, sure. Well, uh, as you've seen, Guy, um, multi-vendor allowed Deutsche Telekom to bring together the best talents from amongst all the different vendors um, and creating the strongest collection of technical abilities within a single team. Um, that built um, a very secure and safe um, uh, structure for the project for Deutsche Telekom within the team and enabled a long-term resilient solution to be pulled together without a single dependency um, uh, that the project was re relying on, say, one vendor or, or one piece of uh, critical infrastructure. So you've got the redundancy of that at that level. And at a personal level, I'd just like to add, it's been fun and interesting working with all those key architects and thinkers from across the projects and different vendors. That's very good to hear. Well, let's move on to look at where we are now and what we still have to do. Charles, what are the challenges that you identified in NIMS that you have not yet solved, but which will be tackled in the next phase? Good question. And we already accomplished a lot. Let's be clear here. So thank you for Deutsche Telekom and thank you for Christoph for bringing us all together and, and running one of the largest projects in, 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 its, in, the, in the live network. So thank you for this. Uh, but yeah, I think we can do some further optimization on getting more performance out of the hardware using acceleration techniques, right? There's some acceleration cards from SmartNICs, FPGAs, or GPU that could potentially be leveraged here and program the environment on the fly to have offload of some capabilities directly in some hardware acceleration to get even more performance. Um, furthermore, I think there's a lot of things that we can look ahead and how do we automate the uh, operation, so AI ops type of technology so that we can predict failure ahead of time. We can look at capacity and look at trend and analyze when and if we're going to run out of capacity so that we can take a, a corrective action earlier and before a failure and therefore have a, a better service to Deutsche Telekom's customer. Thank you. And Christoph, over to you for, for Deutsche Telekom's view. You know, what still has to be achieved? What are the challenges that NIMS has, has brought up so far that we, we may have to look at in the next phase? I think uh, we made great progress in, in NIMS so far. So Telco Cloud is, is real. But of course, we continuously really aim for more and uh, moving ahead towards our vision uh, is definitely our, our target. And with this mindset, we really identified quite soon that there are challenges around the cloudification journey, which we will not be able to solve within the NIMS project timeline, because these were challenges where there was no best practice so far existing. And therefore we created our co-creation program as, as Paul and David uh, said, where all partners like Juniper, Red Hat, Lenovo, Metaswitch, Marvinia, HP, and also Intel really uh, uh, become part of. And this program really uh, had been set up to discuss uh, and propose solutions for all of these, these challenges, which really help DTs on its cloudification environment uh, uh, to evolve in, in future. And uh, let's say there are a couple of, of topics uh, where, which I would like to point out. Uh, which are currently driven really by that team and which are relevant not just for that team, but I also think for the whole industry. And I would like to point out two to three things. One thing is uh, the hardware efficiency of uh, x86. So uh, we need to optimize our current uh, bill of material, the virtual bomb of material, the footprint, by adding hardware offloading technology solutions. So there are plenty of solutions available, as already mentioned, we have smart NICs, we have FPGAs, we have uh, GPUs, but there are also DPUs around the corner. And we need to see as Deutsche Telekom and probably also as the whole industry, which one brings us the lowest footprint based on our workload, because it's partially workload uh, depending. And yes, we also want and currently are also already doing a uh, cloudifying our user plane, not just the control plane part. The second challenge is the path to cloud native. So we are currently focusing mainly on VNF based deployments and our, our whole automation framework is really focusing on that at the moment. But uh, container based deployments are around the corner. So we also need to make sure that we are able to deploy really on, on bare metal. So this is also something where, uh, where we are working in, in that group. And last but not least, the third topic is the AI ML. Uh, piece of puzzle for automatic root cause analysis. And also here our DevOps uh, philosophy is in because uh, 
This is if we want to achieve our uh, three to one zero vision, automatic root cause analysis is the key and not just in the lab for the analysis of uh, faulty test cases, also uh, in operations, in closed loop operations. So there are a lot of things to do in, in, that, uh, in that ecosystem, uh, in technology challenges around technology challenges. And as you can see, Guy, they are all technology topics um, and we will drive them to a solution. And coming back to the panel discussion uh, and the headline, the co-design uh, and, and collaboration, I can confirm, having a look at these technology challenges, uh, we already achieved a good status on the level of uh, co-design and collaboration. And therefore, a big thank you uh, to all of my partners. Uh, they are available for me around the clock. Uh, it's great support also within the team. And it's really great to see which team spirit we created uh, during the journey so far. And Christoph, what's your key takeaway from this work? And do you think that the approach has paid off? I think let me start with the, the answer to the question. Do you think that it paid off? The answer is a clear yes. Um, and for me, there are at the end four, four uh, key takeaways. I think first of all, let's say a combined team approach is key really to get the things done, especially when things were never done before. And even when team members are partially competitors. So that's absolutely important, combined team approach. The second is there are still many industry challenges around us, but that should not end up in not starting the work and, and driving these topics. The third thing is we as DT are keen on pushing the boundaries. That's part of uh, our Deutsche Telekom DNA. So not just redo what others did, really push things where probably most of the people said, that's not possible. That's motivating us. And the fourth topic is always better, never perfect. That's really coming back to the beginning of the discussion, really permanent optimization. That must be in your mentality. That must be part of the DNA over the whole DevOps cycle. And all the, these topics really, they are motivating me every morning because we can create the future. Excellent. Well, Christoph, thank you very much. And to all of you, thank you all very much indeed for sharing your experiences of the NIMS project. And for the complete picture on NIMS, please do take a look at the other videos in this series. There'll be seven interviews in total, plus two panel discussions that delve deeper into the Telco Cloud. And watch out for news of our live Q&A program, which is coming soon. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.